Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's Wi-Fi Wednesday. My name is Kevin Z. I am founder and CEO of My Wi-Fi Networks. And I'm going to get right into it this week because I know everyone's super excited about all the new features that we recently launched. So let me uh, start running through all of them one by one, and I'll show you how they all work. So uh, I'm actually going to use the uh, Facebook post that I had just so you can all follow along. Uh, we also have these posted in our update section, but I wanted to run through every single one and kind of show you a quick demo or overview of exactly uh, you know, what it is. So the first thing is the new email templates. So these are used when you're using our internal or embedded email editor. They're used for sending broadcasts or automations. So let me hop right into the dashboard and show you where those live. So for example, if I had uh, some contacts here, and I have myself here that I just connected here on the Aruba device. I'll show you about that in a minute. So let's say I wanted to send a notification to myself so I can go actions. I choose email. Here I send it from myself to myself. Call it testing new templates. Now I go proceed, start from template. And you'll notice here we have a ton of new ones. So I'm not gonna go through every single one, but these are really nice. Uh, you can also preview them by clicking on the preview button here. So if you wanted to see what this looked like specific, uh, one sec, let me go to one of these. Oh, it appears that that preview button is not currently working. And we'll get that fixed right away because I know it was. Uh, so um, here's all the new uh, screenshots we have. I can actually zoom in to show you a little bit better. So we have for different categories, and they're all really intended to be used as kind of a starting point where you would take it and then edit it from there. So these are product launch uh, templates. For example, if you wanted to do something like uh, you know delivery, you can do a search. So we're going to be adding a ton more, and you can search by type. So you can let's say restaurant. So here I have like restaurant. I have a ton of restaurant options. Uh, there's different themes. So let's say I also, you know, obviously you can keep going with this. Like there's a, over 300 of them in there. So we, I think we have 350 total. And we're going to constantly kind of take these and add to them and make renditions of them. So if there's any one specifically that you want, you know, please request it and we'll, uh, we'll try to get those done. So those are the new email templates. So they're found right inside the email editor. Going back over here. As well, we're going to be adding the SMTP integrations shortly. Uh, we're just finalizing that last release. Sorry, guys. Facebook appears to be really slow here. But uh, Aruba Instant On is actually something that I am most excited about. Uh, and uh, thank you to uh, Chabaruk here for also sharing some of these screenshots. And it'll actually help me uh, explain what Aruba Instant On is. So. It's made by Hewlett Packard or Aruba Networks. Uh, typically, Aruba in the cloud or Aruba Cloud uh, requires a licensing fee, similar to like Meraki or the other big manufacturers. They're used for much larger locations, multi-access point. Uh, sometime in 2018 or 2019, Aruba launched Aruba Instant On, which was geared towards a small business audience, so it kind of locations that don't have hundreds of access points that have up to 25 access points at lo on location. More importantly, just small locations, small businesses that might only need one or two access points. So they came out with this line of uh, plug and play devices that are all controlled via app or desktop, kind of similar to a cloud controller through a portal, which I'll, I'll go through in a minute. These are really good because there's no licensing fee. It's a one-time cost, one-time payment for the hardware. You take it, plug it in, set it up one time, and then it's linked to our system and you can manage everything after through your sub-users through the MyWiFi platform. So you don't actually have to let your users use the Aruba setup. It's really for, you know, for the one-time hardware setup and for networking. The benefit of us is that you now have that sub-user access where you can give your clients access to their own locations. So they have everything from uh, you know, these small APs that are ranged for like 100 bucks for retail shops, uh, larger ones for medical offices, doctor's offices, cafes, boutique hotels and restaurants. Uh, you could outfit entire offices or design firms uh, with this. And they have outdoor ones as well for patios. And you can mesh them together. You can add them all to a single network really easily, super easy to install. And uh, they kind of figure themselves out. So they um, were either bridge the network or they extend the network. Or if you plug them both in, they'll work together uh, on the same network. So really easy to set up. And 
Uh, in fact, there's another slide here I wanted to show you about the benefits of Aruba. And then I'll hop in and show you specifically um, you know, what it is. And yeah, I think it was here. So when you think about, you know, compared to even Meraki Go or anything greater, like it's usually very expensive for a licensing fee. And I'm not saying it's wrong. And I think Meraki is great. I think Aruba is great. The, the enterprise grade stuff for those that need it. But if you don't, instant on, you have five models uh, to choose from. There's a one-year warranty initially on it. You can control it from mobile app or the cloud portal. There's no subscription cost. You can manage multiple sites. And best of all, it integrates now directly with our system. So I can actually... Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you guys for a second and show you the device that I have right over here. So this is the Aruba Instadon. This is the $100 device. Uh, it's really nice actually when you configure it. There's the uh, light over here that kind of flashes and uh, there's an app that works with it. It's, it's actually it's metal. It's really cool. Uh, when you compare it to the SH50, just to kind of give you guys an example. So like this is the size difference. So it's quite a bit bigger, but uh, obviously it's more powerful. And this is the smallest one. Uh, there's different models uh, that are available there, uh, as you see uh, on the slides. As well, there's a Aruba app. I'm not going to go through the whole app experience. If you want to see that, you can probably check out YouTube. They may have a, probably a good example of that. Uh, but talking about what the portal looks like and the device I have here and how it's kind of managed. So what you do is you follow the instructions. We added a new support article uh, linked there. You have something called the uh, Aruba Instant On Portal. So you log into the portal, it's free. You set up a free account, you add your hardware, you follow the steps, it's super easy. And I can actually kind of show you the uh, initial steps. If you want to set up a new client, for example, a new location, uh, you'd have to do one thing with Aruba to set up a new location, and then you would set it up with us, and it's like a one-time thing, it takes just a few minutes. So for example, if I wanted to set up a new location, I would hop in here, I would go add new devices or set up a new site. And here it's really easy. It auto configures. All you do is plug it into the network. It configures, it detects it, and then you add it to the location, adopts all the settings that you have if you're adding more than one. If you're adding a new site, you simply go set up new site and you follow the instructions here. Usually it's on site. You do it via mobile app. You don't even have to have like a laptop there. You can literally do it via mobile app. And then you hop in to uh, kind of the portal here. It kind of shows you all the networks you have, all the clients you have, you know, anything was transferred. And the cool thing about this too is it actually gives you a little bit more stats about like how much was used for streaming. So this is the category that's used most, in fact. Um, I don't have too many other, uh, I think through applications here, I wasn't using too much with it. But you can see like just from my like brief test, you can actually see on the network the kinds of websites that your clients or the guests are going to. So if this uh, was of interest to you, you can also see you know, lifestyle, you can see, um, you know, exactly what the guests, it doesn't really tell you the exact domain name or website, but it just gives you like the, um, you know, the category. So obviously you can block certain things here. You can see if anything was used. So you got zero bytes on all these uh, things and you have, um, you know, everything else, news and media, productivity, lifestyle. So it just helps you understand how your internet is being used. That's one feature I thought that was uh, really cool, but specifically about how to set this up. It is really, really easy. I go over to my active device over here. Give it a sec, it's just loading. It appears that my uh, browser is a bit slow here as well. Let me try to reload this Aruba site. Here we go. So I have my Aruba guest access point. That's the one I just showed you guys on camera. Um, all you do over here to you add it, it's really simple. You customize the guest portal. It is one page of settings to set up. We have these step by step. So once you have it set up, you go to uh, your guest portal settings. You put your custom portal URL over here. You add your whitelist domains over here. It's like a one time thing. It takes about a couple minutes to copy and paste them. You put in the primary and secondary radius servers, and that's it. Click on Apply Changes, and it will provision itself very quickly. And uh, the connection is great. In fact, um, I did a speed test, and I want to just share my screen one more time to show you the, uh, the results I got on this little Aruba device, uh, which was uh, pretty awesome. 
So check out the results of that speed test. That's on Wi-Fi, guys. So uh, I'm getting super fast Wi-Fi. Now, granted, I am sitting next to it, but um, it is super, super fast, um, all from this thing over here. Just you know, kind of get that screenshot. That's uh, that's pretty insane. Uh, you know, for guest access, that's with the capture portal. It's using our system, authenticated, right in there. So um, you know, obviously, for those uh, those of you who are looking to get some new hardware. Uh, and want to use this at larger locations, I cannot recommend uh, Aruba Instant Dawn enough. Uh, we've done our testing. We have a lot of other uh, partners that uh, use it extensively. And it's really easy to add. And how you add that right over here is you go to Devices. You add a new device. I choose a location, I click on Aruba, and now you have two options. This is the traditional Aruba cloud uh, that still works. It's great, it's awesome, but this is uh, you know for a small business, if you're looking for something with no licensing fees, something that's plug and play and scalable, uh, Aruba Instant On is the way to go. You put the first, just one MAC address, and the other uh, ones, we actually recommend you add each one individually so you can track them in different areas, uh, but you just add the MAC address of your single AP here, and it will uh, set up super quick. And there we have it over here, it's on. So uh, that is uh, Aruba Instant On. We also launched ManyChat. Um, I actually did some videos about this, it's not right now, this has been a few months ago we launched ManyChat, I just have it here as a placeholder. So uh, go back a few months even, I think, to the Wi-Fi Wednesday where I uh, reviewed ManyChat. And um, you know, obviously uh, I'm gonna do some new videos on that because they've really moved away a bit from Facebook Messenger and more into SMS which works great for us because we can do a great SMS opt-in, you know, opt-in through SMS, have a great phone number through SMS, and then use the ManyChat API to communicate with those guests via SMS chatbot, not necessarily Facebook. So that's awesome. We also launched a direct HubSpot integration. So what does this mean? Again, it works in automations or broadcasts. So let's say I wanted to set up an automation. And here I can hop in. I'll set up this automation here as just a demo. Call it hotspot test. Choose my location. I can choose, you know, let's say I want to add every guest to HubSpot. So I can do uh, when guests connect in real time for the first time, we're just adding them once, HubSpot. So if you wanted to add an app, you just paste your app name and API key in here. Uh, we validate it since it's validated. You can add HubSpot right over here. So I already added mine in here. Uh, and then you choose exactly which list you want to add people to. So now every time somebody connects, I'll get added to this HubSpot list. After, you know, obviously uh, when people get transferred there, you can run a bunch of sequences, workflows. HubSpot is an awesome uh, automated tool. So here's how we integrate with that. And really easy uh, to do here, <laughs> really copy and paste. This doesn't use Zapier either. So it's a direct HubSpot integration. We also launched a two-factor. It's similar to Twilio, but it's like the Twilio of India. Uh, it is India's most reliable uh, SMS provider for one-time payments, for bulk SMS, for transactional uh, messages. Uh, they guarantee, I think, like a six to eight second delivery time, which is very good in India. They have direct relationships with the carriers. Obviously, this is very important if you're using SMS as a login option. You click connect with SMS, type in your phone number, you're waiting for the code. You, you don't want to wait a minute. You know, it has to come to you really quickly. So they guarantee like a six second in India SMS, super cheap as well. So uh, you can use the two factor SMS gateway in a few ways. Number one, you can do it as an automation. So let's say I wanted to do something like this. Again, I'm setting up an automation where I want to, you know, and guess connect in real time for the first time. I want to choose two factor. And this is sending a text message. So I choose my two factor that I've added already. And here you can add whatever message you want. Thanks for coming to my restaurant. Excuse the typos. You can put a, uh, you know, emoji here as well. And that will be automatically sent to uh, everyone that connects. It doesn't even recognize it. I misspelled that so bad. It doesn't even recognize it. <laughs> there we go. So uh, yeah, that, there's a direct integration you can do. So it's just like Twilio. You can use it to send text messages. Two-factor is great in India, but it also works anywhere in the world, I believe. So check their rates if you want to use them instead of Twilio. You can just swap it out right over here. 
Additionally, we have a two-factor available as an SMS login option. So again, excuse my browser freezing here. So I'm so excited sometimes to get on these uh, these calls that I keep like my hundred tabs open in the background. Uh, next time I will, I promise I will close those tabs so my computer is not bogged down like this. But let me hop over to the campaign section, show you what I'm talking about here. So if you go to uh, campaign, let's say you use uh, SMS as a login option. I'll just edit this existing campaign. And now on the login section, connect with SMS. When I set that up, I no longer have to choose just from Twilio. I can choose my two-factor.in direct integration. Depending on your API key, you'll have a phone number associated with that. And you can also collect additional information. And this is great. Uh, you can also have customized that uh, verification, the transactional message to actually log in to or authenticate uh, with the network. So here's where you can also add the two-factor.in integration. We also, uh, by popular demand, added the webhooks for the sales CRM. So for those of you who don't know what the sales CRM is, it's the ability to create a preview, preview URL that somebody would go through uh, you know, a flow. So let me just show you, for example, if I use bk.com for Burger King, and I just use that as a preview link and somebody actually went through that. So first of all, it would actually customize, pull the logo, pull the Facebook like box. Somebody would go through, enter their details here, their information. Uh, when they went through that preview link flow, it would count them as a view here, but it would also add them to this lead list. So this lead list was something that lives inside here. Uh, to get the leads from the lead list, you'd have to you know, go over here to reference the leads. You'd have to constantly check here to see, hey, were any new leads added? It was uh, kind of a pain in the ass, right? Uh, I think the big thing, uh, the biggest value here is that not only can you get notified in real time, but you can automate the follow-up in real time for anybody that completes your preview URL. So you can even take your preview URL, put a public on your website and be like, hey, test this out for yourself. Anybody goes through that flow, we collect their uh, name, email, phone number, uh, we have the campaign, uh, the name that we're pulling and the preview URL also that we're pulling and sending via payload. And rather than just sitting over here, it still will sit over here, but you can also now configure this to send to any endpoint of your choice. So what you do here is um, if you already, if you don't know what an endpoint is, um, you can go to Zapier uh, and use their webhook. So actually for those um, that might just want a quick view on this. Let me pull up exactly what I'm talking about here. So here's how to integrate it with Zapier. We call it Webhook, but Webhooks are great. You can send it to any endpoint. So if you uh, have a custom endpoint, you can send it there. But I, I'm assuming that most of you are going to be using uh, Zapier or Integromat to then process the transfer to your CRM for these preview links. So what you want to do here is, uh, again, everything's loading super slow here. My apologies. But uh, here I want to connect an app or create a new Zap. So I just go right, go right into Zapier, click on the plus to create a new Zap. And here, type in webhook. And here, webhooks by Zapier. Click on that and you can choose your trigger. So you'd retrieve a pull, catch hook. So you retrieve. Or my apologies, it should be a catch hook. I clicked on the wrong thing. So here, what this does is web, uh, Zapier gives you the webhook endpoint URL. So you copy to this to the clipboard, you go right into your sales CRM, and you paste this at the top here. So essentially what you're doing is anybody that completes or gets added to your lead list will be sent to this Zapier endpoint. 
And then at that point, what you can do is you'll have all the different uh, elements that it contains, and uh, you can then send it to uh, anything of your choice. So let me uh, actually do this. I will show you that you it waits for a webhook here. So I'll show you, in fact, um, how this works. Go back to my... Uh, so the first time you're setting this up, you also have to trigger uh, the first hook so it has something to, to read from. So I would go to any of the previews that I have here. Uh, be sure not to click on um, preview. You want to take the actual link. So you can copy URL. And we can also look at uh, setting up a test webhook there as well. So you don't have to do this. But this is currently what you have to do. So you visit that preview URL. Obviously, this is something you could be sending to your client. So set the terms, do free. Let's say I connect with email. Type in my details. So here I'm going through this flow. I'm um, we'll let that do its thing. Apologies, I opened up a couple too many tabs here. So back to the lead list. The same way that you have a timestamp on this guest that I just logged in with my first name and email. That's also triggered, you can see it was uh, moved on to the next step, it was validated. We can even find the data and see what, what the data received was. You can see 28 seconds ago, it pulled my name, email, phone number, and as I mentioned, we're gonna be adding the uh, preview URL, so if you want to reuse that URL and the logo perhaps, and some other elements over here, but most important, name, email, phone number, right? You know you're getting that, and uh, you're able to then take that data and send it wherever you want. So let's say you use, you know, ClickFunnels, or let's say you use, uh, you want to put somebody into your autoresponder, you want to send somebody to uh, your HubSpot CRM account, to your Salesforce account, uh, your Zoho sales CRM account, whatever you want, to a Google Sheet. You want to send yourself a text message saying, hey, this lead just filled out a preview. You want to organize that by a digest by Zapier and just send it to yourself once a day. Um, you know, whatever you want, sky's the limit, truly. So uh, that is the webhook CRM uh, for the, sorry, the webhook for the sales CRM. And that's how you set it up with Zapier. Um, obviously, sky's the limit for what you can do uh, with this. And it's great as you start doing some mass mail or some outbound or outreach. Uh, this will help keep you in the loop and help you follow up with your leads uh, fast. We also uh, integrated directly with Great Us. So Great Us is uh, actually a partner of ours, and we're uh, going to be doing some joint training with them very shortly. So more news on that, and potentially some special sign-up uh, offers with them. Uh, and that being said, they're great if you want to automate the review process. You want to have a pretty advanced review funnel. If you want to segment reviews, you want to automate some stuff that you do on the review side. Uh, how it works again, really easy. Uh, integrates the same way that any automation or broadcast would. So if you wanted to filter a group and send them into the review funnel on demand, usually you do that if you're just adding them for the first time and then set something up that's more automated. So you'd set something up like this. Let's say you want to call it review funnel. You say when guests, uh, actually at this point you can delay it here or uh, Great Us also has a delay on their end. So um, you know, it really doesn't matter when somebody comes, you might want to use the logic on their end. Um, to do something depending on what you're doing. But let's say when a guest over here disconnects uh, in real time, uh, not always you want to do it pretty much on a repeat visitor because you know, let's say if somebody comes back to your location three times, then they're probably going to be more likely to leave a positive review because they've come back. If they didn't like it, they probably wouldn't come back. So here on the third visit, when guests disconnect, you can send to grade us. You can very easily add your own grade us account with uh, your API token and API secret. 
Uh, I've already added that here to show you for an example. And then you have uh, a profile. And the profile, what they have is uh, basically a funnel. So whatever your funnel is, well, let's say you had for like a pizza place, you create your whole pizza funnel on Great Us. Then over here, you just do a one-time link just like that, and it's all good. So um, this is a great, great system. And those, please, that use Great Us, please reach out to me personally. We're going to be doing some case studies, and I'd love to work with you to uh, help highlight what you're doing integrating my Wi-Fi with Great Us because there's a big opportunity um, for us to help you directly in getting you some really good results there uh, if you're looking to uh, automate your review process. So that is uh, another integration that we launched. And uh, last but not least, we also launched Universal Search. So uh, it's a small feature, but it's very powerful in fact. It's just right up here. So you'll see now a search bar at the top of your platform. So if I wanted to search for something, I don't have too much here to search, but let me search for, let's say, uh, rental home. Just looking here, so you have an automation or, you know, Google. If I'm searching for any automation, location. If I was searching for a person, I can type in their name. You see, like, my name there. So uh, it's great to find things quickly. If you're looking for something really, really quickly, you can very easily uh, just search for any client, location, device, campaign you know, contacts, uh, any uh, automation, anything like that, any app. So any asset that we have in the system, you just search up here and you will find it very quickly. In fact, uh, it's just a demo account here, but this has a better example of kind of what you get. It shows apps, automations, campaigns, devices, contacts, etc., all through this universal global search bar. And that's it, guys. I think, um, you know, that was a ton of new integrations as far as... Uh, some new stuff that we have planned. Uh, we have a more hardware integrations. We have the SMTP email integration we're launching shortly. Um, but please go to feedback.mywifi.io, browse through that, vote on what you want most. Uh, there's two sections there. There's the integrations and the platform features. Please go through it all and vote because that's how we prioritize what we build next. And uh, we obviously value your feedback. So anything you have to help us help you, please let us know. And there's more training coming soon, as you know, like, you know, all these new features that we're launching will change the way that we train. So we're just going through that final end curve of, of these, this new big wave of new features Then I'll be doing some uh, live training with all of you. In fact, uh, please let me know what you prefer on the training side. If you prefer like a crash course, like one day we can do like a four to six hour session. And then I can, you know, chop that, those videos up to share with you. And it'll really be like the A to Z crash course on, on getting your first sales. Or I can extend it longer into like a, you know, chopped up step-by-step -step videos and to more of an academy style, some more academy courses. Please let me know what training style you prefer and I'll be sure to uh, create things accordingly. That being said, thank you all for watching this live and also thank you for watching the replay. If you have any questions, go to support.mywifinetworks.com. We're launching a new knowledge base soon, so that should be launched hopefully by next week, if not the next the week after. Um, obviously, I, I'm always excited and hoping that we can get things out quick and then there's always the final touches that we have to do so um, yeah we're doing our best to get everything out to you quickly but anything you have uh, from a feedback standpoint or uh, any requests please uh, let us know chat with us or vote at feedback.mywifi.io thanks everyone talk to you soon